Hi everyone and welcome here. I hope you're doing well. My name is Maika. I'm a psychologist and the purpose of this channel is to support you in your self-leadership and living the life that you aspire for. I'm really excited about today's topic because I want to talk about personal development. I want to talk about how we can know if we've grown as a person and made progress in our personal development. What are the signs of someone who has grown throughout their lifetime? To answer these questions, I'd like to look at some theories of personal development from psychology. In psychology, personal development and growth is discussed under the header of ego development. Ego is meant in a very neutral sense of the self. These theories explore our growth through stages. And some famous scientists in these lines are Kohlberg, Piaget, Kuckreuter, Löwinger, King, and Thomas Binder, who actually got me interested in this topic by a talk that he gave that I was fortunate to attend. And there are four areas of life in which we can grow or not. I'd like to look at these soon, but before we do, I'd like to share some general assumptions these theories make so you get the bigger picture. So the first general assumption of these theories of personal growth is that personal growth follows a pattern of general insights and this can be summarized and mapped out in a way so that it can apply to each and every single person. Assumption number two is that the same behavior or the same thing someone may say can come from different stages of development. So what is important here is not what the person actually does so much, but their motivation and reasoning behind it. Maybe you also discussed the Heinz dilemma in school, which poses the challenge or a question that of, of a guy named Heinz, and he can only save his wife's life if he steals medicine. And the question is, should he do it or should he not? And then why? And you can give both answers, yes and no, from very different reasonings and motivations, like saying he should do it because otherwise his wife will scold him, or he shouldn't do it because otherwise he'll get caught. So these were two very different answers that both came from the same stage of personal development. And the last basic assumption I'd like to introduce is that these theories distinguish between growth and learning. Growth is a major game changer. It's when you go through a transformation when you gain some insight into the nature of things that changes you for the rest of your life. Like when you learn to cook with a new spice. Whereas learning means acquiring more knowledge in the same area, like learning to cook another recipe with the same ingredients. So let's look at the four areas in which we grow, if we grow actually, because most people stop growing when they're 25 years old. So you can't really say that when people get older, they're more developed personally than younger people. In research, no connection was found between age and personal development. So. I want to look at those four areas and map out where we start in our growth and where the journey may take us if we grow and develop ourselves personally. And maybe you can follow along and make a mental note of where you think you are on the different spectrums in those four areas. And maybe you'll even find a new inspiration for your next step in your own personal development character and impulse control. So the first area of personal development 
deals with the question, how do I actually live my values? How do I control my impulses? You may have noticed that people may have the same value, but act vastly differently. We all start out at earlier stages in this area, which means that we have a low impulse control and we do whatever comes to mind. If we have the idea, I need to eat ice cream, we go and get ice cream. If we have the idea that, or the impulse to shout at someone, we just shout out at them. And the only way someone on earlier stages of development in this area will actually follow up on their values or on social norms is if they're being watched and they feel like they'll be punished if they don't comply. As we learn and grow, we reach higher stages in this area. And this means we develop the ability for self-regulation and self-control. We develop the ability to follow through on a goal, to be able to focus and deal with our impulses that might take us away from the goal if we follow them in a healthy way, which doesn't mean suppressing them, but it also doesn't mean doing whatever comes to mind spontaneously. And what I find super, super interesting in this connection is that people on higher stages of development in this area, it's not like they're some ideal super person who is like a machine of goodness and always does the same thing very rigidly because they become perfect. But the core quality of someone who is on a higher stage of development in this area is that they are flexible. They are actually able to also question their ideals and values and adapt them according to circumstances. Like they may be able to be honest and authentic, but also be diplomatic. And then they choose whatever is necessary according to the situation. And another core feature on higher stages of development in this area is that these people are pretty independent from the approval of others in their choices and behavior. Behavior in relationships. This area of personal development looks at the question, how do I treat others? On early stages of development, people mainly look for their own gain in relationships and interactions. This means that as soon as I notice that I'm not gaining something in a relationship or an interaction is becoming about the other person, I try to leave this interaction or relationship. It may also mean that someone is being manipulative trying to force others to fulfill their needs. It can also mean being judgmental, not reflecting feedback, but rather seeing it as a personal attack, not being able to cope with someone having a different opinion. This person will immediately become the enemy. And in conflicts, someone on earlier stages of development in their behavior in relationships will look for a win-lose situation or rather they will have the attitude that I can only win if you lose so I better make sure that you lose. On higher stages of development in this area people understand that other people have their own needs and their own life separate from my needs and they become more and more able to actually also contribute to the life and needs of others. It means understanding that someone can have a different opinion than I have and we can still be friends. Feedback is reflected openly. People on higher stages of development in their behavior and relationships will seek to understand others rather than judge them. Also, they develop the ability to be vulnerable, to let others see who they really are and let them come close to them. And in conflicts, they strive for a win-win situation or a compromise. 
meaning that they understand that conflicts, first of all, are nothing to run away from. They can actually boost personal development and it doesn't mean that you have to lose in order for me to win, but let's see how we can contribute to each other's lives together. Focus of attention. On early stages of development, our focus of attention is very much on external things, like how much money do I earn? How much do I own? How do I look in the eyes of others? And there is no real self-reflection in an internal sense. Self-reflection is always based on where am I and how can I get more of money, status, and possessions? And how can I fulfill my own needs? On later stages of development, our focus of attention turns more inward, actually. It turns more on feelings, perspectives, intentions, experiences, and there is a regular self-reflection in an internal sense, asking ourselves, what was my intention in doing this? And how did I do something? Was I present in the moment? Did I do it mindfully? Style of thinking. This last area of personal development has to do with our thought structures, how we make sense of the world, how we connect things. And on early stages of development, we are very much guided by stereotypes that are unreflected and our thinking is very undifferentiated. We have categories in which we shove everything into no matter if it fits or not. So let's say someone has the category young people equals unreliable. Every young person will be stuffed into this category and not given a chance to show who they really are. On later stages of development, we become more complex in our thought patterns and more differentiated. We are able to understand and live with the fact that things are complex, paradox, and uncertain. And this actually makes our life easier. And when this person will meet a young person, they will just know that there's so much more to someone than their age and be open to meet whomever is in front of them. So in essence, someone who has gone through more personal development in their life is more self-regulated and flexible. They're more able to question also their ideals and values and adapt them to circumstances. They are more real in relationships and more able to contribute to the needs of others. They are more aware of their inner world and they're more able, and they also do it more, to think about things from different perspectives and to deal with uncertainty and not knowing something. By the way, studies show that people who are on later stages of personal development are also more successful professionally. And I think it would be really interesting to see other areas of life in which people flourish if they're on later stages of development, which is my assumption and hypothesis. What are your thoughts on these four areas of personal development? Do they resonate with you? Have you made experiences connected to these four areas of life? Would you have added anything? Would you have added another area or something to the description of the individual spectrums? Let me know. And if you want to make sure not to miss anything that is posted on this channel, please remember to hit the subscribe button and notification bell. Leave a like if you liked the video. Check me out on Facebook and Instagram, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.